value of two is very important. It's pretty bright, just in the US, not the best, but of course, the elevation is pretty good. New principle, again, this fall is pretty good.
Um, we have like, a couple of awards to give out. So if you're all here we'll just for a few minutes, I promise as soon as we're done with the awards, we'll take a recess and let everybody get home to continue their summer. Sorry. Oh, okay. yeah. So yeah. trustees, we are very honored to recognize a few of our employees, uh, a couple of folks from our benefits office, as well as uh, two teachers uh, from the high school, which just done some special work. And we want them to be publicly recognized. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Good evening, um, Mr. Ryan and board. Uh, tonight, we would like to recognize Mr. Vincent Presidio. You'll come up real quick. Vincent Presidio is being recognized by East Central High School for embodying the district's values of adaptability, loyalty, and teamwork. Mr. Presidio has been a math teacher at East Central for the past six years. He routinely has participated in our 6.30 a.m. Monday morning administrative meetings, completed his educational administration internship at high school, undertaking campus level projects, and has volunteered for numerous campus and district-wide committees. This year, he stepped up in an enormous way during the spring semester. Due to unforeseen circumstances, he was called upon to fill a void and was asked to step up and lead the learning academy and the South Campus at East Central High School until the end of the year. All the while, he was still teaching all six of his math classes. His immediate response was put me in coach, I'll do whatever we need to do to get the job done. This level of commitment places others around him in um, rarefied air. Vincent's willingness to step into the fray, regardless of the personal cost, demonstrated his deep loyalty to the central ISD. Mr. Presidio embodied adaptability by his relentless effort to learn and grow, ask questions, and adjust to his new role while continuously adapting to meet the needs of all students and staff at the South Campus. He personally was responsible for supporting, coaching, leading, and mentoring 56 at-risk Learning Academy students to meet their goal and graduate this year. Lastly, Vincent Persimio demonstrated teamwork by his unwavering altruistic nature. He truly demonstrated his willingness to serve and support others regardless of the cost and was the ultimate teammate. He carried the weight of his role like a true champion and is a role model for all others to live by. Thank you, Mr. Persimio, and we are eternally grateful to you for your service to East Central ISD.
like to call her Mr. Forrest Hawthorne. He is the Decentral Electricon uh, sponsor. He teaches uh, the principles of technology at high school, and the students in his class build from the ground up an electric car as their performance assessment, and they enter races as the culminating event. Now, instead of me talking about it, Channel 4 actually did a little note news segment on them, and so I'm going to play that so you can see all this great work.
very, very proud of the advice that we've been able to work with and get across that finish line and earn credential. Very proud of the staff who have engaged in this work. The staff who have engaged in this work going forward are noted in, in the report as well. Uh, Mr. Casino, we met earlier this evening, we had a significant uh, role in the Olympic program this year. Um, but I, I just felt like it was, it was worthy of taking the time to say that for a very long time, and not just at the high school, but at multiple levels, uh, actually throughout our organization, we know that we've got to create multiple um, pathways for kids to meet those needs so that you know, by the time they get to the end, they are in the area of life and move on in the need of goals they have for themselves in their lives and in the future. And so um, this is the first step in the process towards getting an approval to continue that program going forward. So this is a public hearing. At this time, if anybody wants to speak to this program, uh, please come forward and register your comments. Our next goal was um, in the 
in your survey. It had to do with a level of cooperation. Uh, campuses and other departments feel like they have with our, each of our sub-departments. Our goal was to support at least 80% in that area, and three of our six uh, sub-departments did score above 80%, and four of the six had improvement. So this is a goal that we carried over from last year, or some adjustments. This has to do with our rocket district curriculum for all of our courses. Um, there are lots and lots of courses offered throughout the district um, at all levels, and that includes for some of these and elective areas. So um, our goal for our staff at the end of last year that we had 40% of all the offered courses have a district curriculum. Um, and 94% of the core courses, and so our goal was to increase that by 25%, which would have been a 65% um, measure. We only had 55% of the courses in the district curriculum. Keep in mind that that's all the electives and everything, and even some courses that don't matter with you. As far as the core courses go, all of, we did, did get 100% of the required core courses completed. Um, 96% of core courses, because there are you know, like a couple of math and science classes that we did not get the curriculum completed on, but they are not required courses. And then our final goal was to spend 40% of our time during the week on coaching, providing feedback, observing, and working on the system, and you can see Paul and Swain both of those we did meet our goal. So the areas that we were focusing on this year are priorities. As you know, we did a lot of work with Google Language and the revitalization of that program. We had our task force meet throughout the fall. Um, we came with our proposal to do the Google Language Academies. Since that was approved, we've had parent meetings. We've had a lot of um, work on the staffing because we've had to um, put the teachers up between the two campuses. We have a new director, a new coordinator, and very recently, a new specialist in the bilingual ESL program. Um, so we've done a lot of work trying to reduce that area, and we're ready for next year. In college career and military readiness, um, lots of certification programs. You saw the electric car program earlier. Um, this group was very instrumental in getting the leadership academy off the ground along with the campus staff there. And um, then we have uh, special education. Uh, you probably are aware there were a lot of change in all those medical issues in special education with the state of Texas. And so uh, we spent a lot of time this year working on that, making sure identifying the correct students um, for special education. We also had a group called the Mod Squad that worked together, and they were working on um, uh, with a lot of other curriculum, making sure that the students are um, still getting the curriculum that they need, and also that they are being evaluated in an appropriate way. Um, assessment. Great configuration, as you're aware, we get three day on campuses. And quite a bit of time and effort this year, looking at staffing, looking at um, resources and allowing those up amongst the campuses. Um, proclamation uh, 2019, we approved that in March. That was the K through 8 um, English language arts and Spanish language arts textbook adoption. It is massive. We've got lots of materials coming in this summer to be ready in the fall. A curriculum management plan that goes back to the, um, the curriculum line that I talked about earlier, having the district curriculum ready for the courses, and um, getting that out to the campuses. We have our online curriculum toolkit. That's a continuous thing we're working on. Standard place grading. Uh, initially, we put into place what we call critical content. We identified the most important things within each of the courses and also wrote um, efficiency scales for that, and that is used when it's made the best way to um, determine uh, the level that the students are, are achieving at. And lastly, assessment, we worked on our early assessments this year. We implemented different assessments from the state. We had some training specific to assessment, and we had the efficiency scales for it.
color is communicating with communicating student goals with parents and students. And one way you can do that is with student We do have that at some of our campuses, but we're considering expanding. As I talked about a few minutes ago, utilize proficiency skills. So we put those in place this year, but our next step is we really need to start using that as an instructional tool with the teachers, students, and parents. Um, the curriculum audit, that's back to that critical management plan again. Um, we want to continue working towards the 100% goal to have a curriculum for 100% of our courses. And then also, because the student learning and progress pillar, we need to continue working on a lot of other performance gaps in targeted areas. Achievement and growth. Second pillar, post secondary readiness. ECIST schools will prepare ECIST students for citizenship, gainful employment, and success in the future. Ensure students are real world ready. And finally, in this area, um, so we had checked to see what seniors had a post secondary plan that they knew what they wanted to do after um, high school, whether university, two year school, grade school, military, go to the workforce. And so we were up 23% um, this year from last year to this year, and the number of kids that had a plan. Um, also, we had a significant increase in our students taking um, post secondary readiness exams. So that's the Texas Success Initiative exam, the exams, ASVAB, we actually had all the juniors take that, um, ACT, SAT, and actually back to TSI, we kind of focused on the sophomores this year and had a pretty big increase of them taking that particular test. Um, we look at four year plans, the four year high school plans, and if you look at the cohorts of, of students throughout the high school, you can see that. Um, as you go through the cohorts, we're increasing each year. So um, we need more and more of our kids with four year plans. Um, there were only 23 senior, seniors that over 700 in the graduating class that didn't have an endorsement as part of their graduation. And then also, we're, we're just sort of working with more and more students in the college and career military readiness area. We documented um, about 2,000 CCMR interactions. From pre K all the way up to high school. And then a little exciting thing um, we have closed the gaps in regard to AP student demographics. We've got plenty of the general student population. So we have approximately the same percentage of, of each um, demographic in the general population as are taking AP classes. And we did have some analysis in that before. So we're very proud of that. The third pillar engaged in all rounded students. ECISD will empower all students through diverse experiences beyond the classroom to be productive members of our community. So some of the things we discovered, we thought we need to have some better lines of communication regarding the marketing of our programs and opportunities through social media and through websites. Um, another thing we discovered is we don't really have a, a effective efficient system in place to collect information and to evaluate these programs and activities to see if they um, are you know, what the students want, what the community wants, how effective they are. Um, so a possibility would be to put in some feedback loops and surveys um, to find that out. And also the last thing on this is we um, we need to make more of an effort to decide who of these extra opportunities and experiences we should have for all students, we should expect of all students, and um, maybe look at a very little program on that. Community engagement partnerships. CISD will partner with external stakeholders to strengthen community involvement and bridge student outcomes. So we are known citywide for our workforce engagement and connection. I believe one they came to us and wanted us to open the Kansas City School. Um, we were the first district in San Antonio to offer paid summer internships to our students. We 
we have 19 traceable and identifiable working partnerships for students to participate at work sites. But we do need a more effective way of tracking and identifying those partnerships. About 5% of our student population participate on site work based learning. And again, we don't have a, a really good method of evaluating the impact of this. So something that um, going on and you'll see that reflected um, the end of the bar of the week in our annual testing. How are you get with the staff? ECIC leadership will ensure the highest quality workforce to provide the best possible student outcomes for the East Central community. So r is response to intervention. We do have those tracking systems in place. Um, there is some evidence that students and staff, um, that, that we do have clear expectations of our students and staff as they take in some of the surveys. What we are finding is that we don't have a lot of evidence of fidelity to all of our programs, to best practices, and users of resources. This is another thing that we are going to see reflected in our annual results measures that we will be looking at later on this evening. Um, the area of differentiation is one on the teacher evaluation system where um, we do have some work. We only have 20% of our teachers. When we had 20% of our teachers that were for a development level or a level. So that is an area where we do some special development. Um, inconsistent data regarding the melody and the system that tracks on staff to use one of our annual results measures has to do with that attention. So we need to um, work on our system for tracking why. Um, we do have some unfair methods for determining teachers might be effective mining quality. Um, we have to say what's called an equity plan and we do have to determine teacher effectiveness and that is another area where our um, methods um, need to work on that. <coughs> Physical and operational systems, ECISD will optimize the resources for operational efficiency and student success. So uh, that first bullet is, is a really big and important one, and again, it's part of our annual results measures. Um, we need to um, put a process in place to assure that when we're setting our budgets, they are aligned to the assessments that we do. Um, we are doing these assessments currently in all departments and um, campuses. We just want to make sure that we are making really um, effective use of our funds and resources to make sure we're supporting um, our needs. One thing we have discussed is um, efficiency of staff and resources. Remember a few minutes ago I talked about those time studies with the instructional facilitators and the program facilitators, we are looking at possibly doing that with some other staff. Um, our district inventory system is something that we are going to be finding. Um, we've had a committee working on that, also part of our annual measures. Um, staff attendance percentages, also an item later in the agenda, is looking at some ways to improve, increase staff attendance and one of those is through buying back weekdays upon retirement and then also keeping the um, reducing the conference. And the final pillar of student safety and well-being. Each ECIC campus will provide an environment that ensures students feel accepted, safe, and supported emotionally and physically. So we do have evidence that students felt safe with the school district in the end of last year. We also did a decrease in student aggression. We have systems in place to support threatening and bullying behavior. We have systems in place to support students' social and emotional well-being, um, in particular through these peers. Um, we've had an increase in staff and student training for emergency situations this year. Um, systems in place to identify needs and connect stakeholders to support services and for we do need some consistent data collection 
systems for some of these areas. And we also need to have some additional promotion of So that's each of these seven pillars. And I find some of those, and I, as I mentioned several times in there, um, as we're moving through our new continuous growth process, we're going to see a lot of these things popping up in the annual results measures, um, in our strategies within our improvement plans. And so um, there's definitely a connection with what we're doing with the community based mobility system and in our district improvement plan. So there's one other thing that I want to show you. This is definitely a work in progress. Um, you do have in your packet, um, a packet with a chart and some colorful um, things on there. This is our signaling system we come up with. And I'm going to have to for the audience, but you can definitely see it better in the packet. So what we have done is we have taken each of the pillars, each of the seven pillars, and if you recall when we were developing the pillars, um, we came up with some key questions that we would ask ourselves about each pillar to help guide us in determining what evidence or data or measures we would want to review to determine how we were doing in that pillar. So on these charts, you have each of the key questions for that pillar. And then we have a, a color coding system. And the colors up there don't look quite the same as on your, the paper. But there's um, a light blue color. And basically, that's meaning for that key question, based on the evidence we've reviewed, at least for now, we're, just, we're satisfied with our current efforts and we're just going to maintain what we're doing. There's a dark color blue on the paper. And that means that. We're going to maintain for now, but we might consider a change in what we're doing in this area. There's a green color, which means we are going to look at maybe a minor change. By minor change, we need something that maybe within a year we could um, put in place whatever it is that we're going to, whatever strategy we're trying to put in place. And then there's red, which means it would be more of a major change, and it might be something that might take a few years to put everything in place that we would need to. And then white, there's certain ones that might not be applicable right now. It might not necessarily be um, something that um, we're working on right now, particularly for campuses. It might not be at the same level that the campus is. So there are a few that um, have so back to the green and the red. This is another thing that the ones that are color coded that way, you'll see that we find it again in our improvement plans and things like that. Now, for now, you just have one column here of this color coding. But the plan is that we will check all these things, review these things quarterly, and then determine kind of where we are on that. If we are on track with whatever strategies we put in place, um, do we need some help on it? You know, we'll, we'll decide those things each quarter and then report that back to you. And so, like I said, it's a work in progress. So we're going to be putting in four columns up here for each quarter so that we can let you know as we go through the year how we're doing on these things that we've identified and that we might need to make some, some changes on. Okay, so our next steps. Our next steps are, so this is the district one. So this is each of the seven pillars. Those committees that met throughout the spring and created the report and packet also uh, came up with the signaling for each of those pillars. Well, what we have asked campuses to do is their own signaling chart for one pillar. And the pillar we chose this year is community engagement and partnerships. So each of the campuses currently are uh, doing one of these charts for that particular pillar with the key questions, the same key questions that we had at the district level. And 
so that that is also part of their campus needs assessment that they're currently working on as they do their annual results measures and as they do their improvement plans. So then we will develop improvement strategies based on all of these findings we just discussed, the signaling that I just showed you, and it's going to be aligned to our district campus and department annual results measures. Then in the fall, we'll, we will be publishing the community report. If you'll recall, last year, last fall, we had the, the um, community report that we, print, we printed and sent out to everyone and also posted online. So we will have one of those again this fall. Um, and then throughout next year, we're going to be progress monitoring the annual results measures and the strategies. Again, we'll do the signaling quarterly on the CMAS um, charts. We also will be doing quarterly checks on our um, improvement plans. We'll be seeing more of that probably in August or September to see those plans. And so our goal is to just have continuous progress monitoring to check how we're doing as we go throughout the year and be able to report back to you as needed, which is the last bullet. We'll report next June, the full report, but we also will report periodically as appropriate as we go to June. one-on-one -on -one, um, 
all kinds of customized opportunities to be able to do some, some resources and experience, some, some uh, mentoring, some
really good teacher that can provide every kid what they need where they're at at the same time. Well, that's the most complex part of teaching. Just so happens that our evaluations for our teachers are accurate. They're saying that, you know, only six out of ten do that well, and that's not okay. If you're going to do what you're questioning, what you need to do, what you're right, 100% of our teachers need to be able to do that very well. That's an accident to teach. So we need to provide more training, uh, more support, more monitoring of our teachers to make sure that their lesson designs, their plans, and their execution include meeting every kid they're at.
I know we are a you know, tool company now tonight. My question is, um, based on the things that we implement, do we see uh, the gap uh, you know, less than the community and do we feel like we can get better? And is it a uh, challenge? You know, that, that finding a magic bullet is hard to do when that, and that changes every year based on big issues at home, you know, like that. And so, my question, I guess, is, is it, if you feel like it's getting better, if it is, I don't know how many years I've been doing those changes, you know, I mean, it's been so many other 14 years. But do you see that that is getting less than, you know, uh, maybe 15% uh, not passing or 15%, 20%, is it 7% better? You know, I mean, can you imagine that? I would say in some areas it's getting better, in some it's not. I, I think what we are doing is a better job of identifying individual students' needs and working with those students in small groups. Um, I know this year we did a lot of work on the campuses identifying smaller groups of students that if we gave them an extra amount of help and assistance in their specific areas of need that we were able to boost them up and that has been successful. So, so I do think we are starting to make some headway in that area. Uh, until you change the mindset of the parents, you're going to be talking about this going older and greater. It's a matter of change. Uh, if you don't have a parent that's involved, checking on the junior, I was going to the classroom, or what was your home, what have you done? He's not going to improve. Uh, parents will say, I'm, I'm tired. I work hard. I, I don't have time. I just want to sit and rest. That is detrimental to the child. And we're not until we change that mindset. That child, all children are going to suffer. And we, I talk about this myself. I've asked, why is it that? The percentage is a good question. The same question I asked when I first came on the board. And it hasn't been answered because the mindset of the parent has not changed. We cannot convince people. I, 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 I spoke to a PTA at Harmony several years ago, asked for five minutes. He said, let me just ask a couple questions, folks. Do you remember when the little one learned to tie his shoes, his or her shoes? I'm going to say eat, but I'm not just eat or eat. When that child learned to, to tie his shoes, to button the blouse, the shirt, to brush the teeth, to brush the hair, that child was learning. Who was the teacher? You were the teacher. But once he crosses into the campus, you are the teacher. You teach him. Well, that's your job. That's true. But why did that child learn at home before he came to school and now the parents wash their hands of the education? That's the problem. We need to get that mindset changed. Them. And I told them, I said, folks, you were the teacher way back then. Why are you now dropping the ball? You need to continue to push him, her. Hey, what did you do today? What do you need to do? Do you understand this? A little, a little help will go a long way because the child understands mom and dad are involved in it. And they want to be, I want to be better. I want to be, I want to be, I want them to be proud of me. But if they're not involved, so I said, yeah, I'm doing okay. They're okay. They're, they're, they're not complaining. And that is what we have to change. I had the same question all this time. And until we change those folks, we're going to talk about this further. Well, I'm going to say, Mr. President, like,
that was included. And he had a hell of an accent. But as a teenager, I used to listen to him. The vocabulary he was using was something I had studied in class, something I knew that I wasn't using. Yet he was using it, and he was using it properly. I was proud of him for that. But the thing is, because my mother had some medication, she pushed. She said, you need to study. They would both work. I think mom would make a buck and quarters and the cat would do it So I understand what you're saying, but it also, it's again the mindset. My parents were of the idea that you don't want to be a laborer like I am the rest of your life. You need to study, son. You need to study, you need to get out of this rut. So, yes, they were tired, they didn't work. But they always asked, are you staying up on current with your studies? At least a little something like that. And because of them, I have an education. Because they pushed me. And once I got older, I did on my own continue. Because I saw that I needed to. But it was granted way back from the floor. You need to study. So yes, I understand like what I said earlier. I'm tired. I am. Yes, we're tired. But a little encouragement from the parent for the child will go a long way. If that child, like the president said, allowed to stay up as long as he wants, that's not good. That's not good. So they're going to be in the same rut forever. A lot of them have the idea, well, they're not that guy's a drug dealer, you know, they're not that guy's a drug dealer. Instead of doing it right from that. So until we change that, I'm going to have the same questions. Why? Why is? Oh, no, 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 there you go. Same thing we have to do. It doesn't matter. If I don't see anything, the point is participation. Until the parents participate, until the board participate, you're going to have, you're still going to get it. And then you've got nothing to say. Because you are, that water is yours because you planted that seed. And it didn't produce. And it's your fault. And we have to give it to us as those. Because of the way those tests are written, 
Those tests are also written for 50% failure and 50% fact. If they find a question that everybody gets, they throw it out. If they find a question that everybody fails, they throw it out. So 50% are going to pass, 50% are going to fail. Standardized testing. We need to not use that. We need to say every child can learn, and we need to do our best. But we also need to understand when we view those results that the real world is the real world. We want them to pass. We're going to do our best for them. Everybody here is dedicated for that result. That's what we say. Here. In view of what we've all heard, and, and I'm thinking back about three years ago, Alright, let me go on to the personnel report. 
Sir, um, you yeah. can start the You can show on packet uh, on page 53. You see this month's personnel report. And uh, this is the time of year where there is a lot of activity in that report. You'll see the uh, employees listed uh, in the report this month. Um, we, we kind of added a status column so that you can see the differentiated uh, those that retired, from those that resigned, uh, from those um, who resigned in the room for, for action, um, those who uh, were terminated, and those who left as a result of uh, program changes, you will recall we had the uh, um, uh, program for the for deaf, uh, and the shift uh, to SAIS, the people uh, so, having said that, there's a lot of activity there. I'd be happy to share more details with you uh, if you desire. I'll give that additional information for you. Uh, I'd also like to look back uh, here. This is one of the busiest months of the year with regard to personnel. I'd like to look back to June of last year and compare to June this year. And uh, the numbers are relatively equal, uh, give or take one or two employees in each of the categories. So that, the movement and the activity in the personal part of June to June is, is comparable. So there's no, no patterns there that suggest um, that we need to look even deeper with the This one this, this has been June previous years. Any individual questions about the people who are supposed to be Good evening, Mr. Casano, Mr. Ryan, board members. Oh, 
good evening. Good evening, such a lot. Today, Megan's famous uh, department will uh, address the goals of our fiscal year. So, maintenance, uh, other maintenance, we have uh, maintenance, grounds, energy management, and body of So, we're going to discuss all of them uh, briefly. Uh, performance facilities will increase the operational efficiency through comprehensive uh, management of facilities and work orders. Time and culture of facilities will enhance customer service while, while being a high level department. Uh, other fiscal responsibility uh, facilities will identify and implement budget quality reductions and maintain production at a low cost. So, our progression on, on the goals for performance grounds, visits, campuses weekly. Maintenance, maintain uh, three to five day completion rate on work orders, and uh, showing girls. Uh, project manager, uh, manager oversees all ongoing projects to ensure the district is receiving uh, all the service. For culture and climate, uh, facilities uh, continues to maximize customer service by increasing communication. Uh, we are proactively scheduling annual PMs on all equipment and on, on annual mandated safety inspections. For fiscal responsibility, uh, energy management has maximized this program by converting LED lighting, changing uh, old HVAC equipment to more efficient equipment, also continuing to happen to energy rebates and participate in the demand response. Uh, the district had received 231,000 at no cost to our district by participating in the demand response. We are currently doing that now. It goes to uh, January, uh, June 1st, which is the uh, uh, 31st. Uh, maintenance will, uh, it will maximize, I'm sorry, will uh, continue to minimize the inventory to prevent waste. And we will be due, due diligent, like uh, obtaining competitive flows and water pricing. Last but not least, the facility is on target to return at least 2% of the use funds. Uh, Mr. Moore will now share some results. Some of the results of our support card. We are, we are, our goal number one is to expect and verify a minimum of 10 work orders per supervisor to leave. It's a place of 40 a week minimum. Uh, Happy to announce that we are averaging 105 per week with 264% uh, of airline and things are done that are uh, Goal number two is increase the number of work orders completed per week. We average completing 205 work orders per week. Campuses is the average uh, inputting 371 more words. We will never get ahead of the ball game when we're staying above water in the field. Goals for these big work words are timely, fast, excluding uncontrolled variables as we go down. Work words less than five days, we average closing 82 of those a week. Work words five to 29 days, we average 122. And work words greater than 30 days, some of the variables are those construction warranty requests, parts on order, backwards, things like that. Uh, our survey results, uh, I won't go in depth on each one of them, but for the last two years, we've seen a positive increase in our communication and what we're providing to the campuses. And we can see this next survey coming out, and we'll have another interest connection, so we're training in the right direction. We've got surveys that go out and close work orders. We'll get positive feedback on them too. Uh, this time I'll pass it over to Mr. Rash and I just kind of summarize that. From the summary of uh, the area of customer service, we will continue to increase communication with all campuses and departments. We will use some work order surveys and consistent follow up. We will continue to go streamline processes with warranty related concerns and put us in facility management uh, during in order to ensure that transparency, feedback, planning, and information, we will continue to communicate with patients with upper management through weekly meetings with all facility management needs supervisors and monthly meetings with campuses. Uh, in our area of performance, we will continue to partner operations to emphasize the consistency and contingency of equipment replacement and long term schedule. To prioritize future facility uh, innovations and addition needs. We will continue to support the leader, uh, support the leader supervisor and trades for training staff and other kind of growth. Within our department, we will continue to insist on recruitment and retention of FM staff and 
fostering any support for the issue of the We will also continue with extensive budget and long-term planning uh, on the purchase of, of equipment and services needed for the city manager. This concludes our presentation at this time. If have any questions, we'd like to have you answer. Yes, sir. We were in a restaurant here 
And then if you move to page 71 at the bottom, you'll see that it's referring to buy back and retirement. It's the start of that. Uh, in, the, in the past, my gosh, this is 20 years. I have no longer than that. Uh, what has historically happened is when an employee retired, if they had any local sick leave accrued, the district would buy that back up to 65 days at a rate of 75 dollars. And when we looked at that, we thought that was pretty good. We knew we had to address it a long time. We did a little market research and found out that we were way off the line when it comes to operability with districts in the area like ours. And so after doing that research, we're bringing uh, a proposal uh, to provide local leave buyback options for those who retire up uh, to 100 days, up to 75. And then if they're a professional employee, we're asking that um, we pay the certified sub rate. And in fact, there's also a subtle change. You have the actual policy part calculus in there because there was one deletion from what you see. There's one thing left out from what you're looking at the other time. So if you go to that same page, it talks about what you need with me, and we have the same as So you'll see that the uh, teachers, administrators, professional employees should pay over the needle to 100 days of the degree teacher substitute rate. Uh, but we also have her professional employees.
address on page 76, and this time uh, Mr. Sutton so will provide a brief uh, overview. Uh, no presentation this time, as it hasn't changed much from last time. It must have been very disappointing. Uh, and I did take the camera from Mr. Sutton so this time. <laughs>
this year, it's going to be not January, so we just kind of put that in place a little bit and then we must hold the session for the workshop. Thank 
made me pause for a second. Previously, 
evaluate each of these systems and uh, that we could uh, create redundancies and uh, inefficiencies. But uh, instead, what we want to do is bring it into one, one smooth system or one smooth system. And so um, I think there are some of those things that I heard about the package before. So that first goal um, was about this fidelity uh, instrumentation, and that came directly out of the time between this and that whole system. We did have one about the human staff, um, and that's the this kind of system. And then uh, the fusion that we showed the partners was from the this kind of system, and uh, uh, the budget comes in from the findings from the this kind of system. So while we looked at everything, we combined it those four priorities on the left, um, you'll see that uh, uh, you won't find any uh, star goals in the university ones. Really the state of not having that uh, 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 district level. Um, but uh, you see many of the communities from our community um, said it's very valuable. And so, uh, we have a few questions here. So, the annual results measures that are listed uh, for you in the year of electronic technology.
case was transcribed before the true long time recorded. And uh, has served on the foundation since the fall of 2016 as an advisory Of our printers 
and a service that our printers also includes equipment. So all of the toner and that sort of thing. So I talked about both items and what, what the now ready part. So this first item is just about the printers. Okay. And currently we spend a little over a hundred thousand dollars a year on equipment, equipment service and equipment replacement. Currently if a printer is having an issue, we put a tech ticket in and our techs have to go and try to fix it, try to repair it or determine that it's not cost effective to repair and not replace it. The other thing that we do is we have budget allocations for supplies for printers. And every single campus in the department buys their own toner. And there are challenges with that because um, there's no guarantee that you're using the appropriate toner for the equipment. Sometimes aftermarket toners reduce the life expectancy of equipment. Sometimes they don't. Um, in addition to that, sometimes they get good pricing on toner and they'll buy it in bulk and then the printer breaks. And the same model doesn't use the same toner and have a bunch of toner stored. And so it's very inefficient. So this service then provides the service of the printers, it provides all of the toner that we need. And our recommendation, if you look at the tabulation on page 83, um, is that we go with both the printer service and supplies. We'd be recommending Daigle. And if you look at the, the bar graph, if you go to the bottom of the page, You'll see at the very bottom bar, the largest bar, that's what we currently pay just for supplies. I mean, printers, printer services, about 100,000 a year. With Bay Hill, we would be providing all of the supplies as well as the service for 43,471. And we chose that particular option because they would be providing both aftermarket uh, for organics and the OEM cartridges that would be the right uh, toners for the equipment as opposed to, so they would know which, which equipment can use the, the OEM and be good, and which equipment can handle a third party aftermarket uh, toner can be good. And what we currently don't, don't have a way of managing that. So all in all, what that means is over a five year period, the, the, if we, if we did not reduce the amount of printing, which we believe it would be paper cut software, management software, that we would see a reduction in printing. Um, we can save the district over five years, two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars in service uh, as well as supplies for our printers. So we think that's a great value for the district. Uh, the team that came together and worked on that uh, we recommended that uh, to me, and after reviewing that with them. Uh, we have any questions about the situation of the printing services, software, and supplies.
uh, annually to hold our vendors accountable to monitor uh, the quality of service responsiveness and providing the uh,